All right, the first thing to do from the Kubeflow user interface is go to the notebooks view. And from the notebooks view, we're gonna create a new notebook. Uh, we're gonna give it a name that's nothing to, too terribly fancy. We're just gonna call it Digit Recognizer Kale. We can take all the defaults, click the launch button. Once our notebook server is up and running, we're ready to go ahead and click on the connect button. And this is going to open up the Jupyter Labs uh, UI. From here, we're gonna open up a terminal session. And now we're going to go ahead and git clone the Kubeflow examples repository. And once this downloads, we are ready to then uh, get a little bit of real estate here in the navigation bar, open up the examples directory, locate the digit recognition uh, Kaggle competition directory, and we're interested in tapping into the digit recognizer Kale notebook. So let's go ahead and open that up. Now that we have the notebook on the right hand side, let's go ahead and go to the Kale deployment panel. Let's go ahead and enable that. And you can see that immediately our notebook has been annotated with a variety of different steps as well as pieces of functionality that Qflow can recognize. Uh, so let's go ahead and walk through it. The first thing that we wanna do is that we wanna install our necessary packages. So let's go ahead and highlight that particular cell and run it. Now that it's completed, we're going to want to restart the kernel. After the kernel has been restart restarted, we can now walk through the balance of the notebook. Now we won't be running each individual cell. We're just gonna walk through uh, what the functionality of each one is, and then we'll run the whole notebook all at once. So the first main section is gonna be our imports section. So here we're going to be using the import cell type from Kale to tell us that all the uh, code that we have here in this particular uh, cell is all going to be re related to imports. You can see here that we're importing libraries like NumPy and Pandas and Pickle, sklearn, as well as TensorFlow. In the next main section of the notebook, this is where we're specifying our project hyperparameters. And you can see we're using the pipeline parameters cell type here to specify things like epochs as well as batch size. In the next main section of the notebook, we're gonna start specifying our pipeline steps. And you can see our first pipeline step that we're specifying here is the download data step. So this step you will actually see manifest as its own uh, component inside of the runtime execution graph after we actually uh, kick off the pipeline. So pipe downloading data is our first pipeline step. Uh, the next step in the pipeline is going to be the load data step. And you can see that the load data step is going to depend on the download data step, which makes sense. You have to download the data first before you can actually load it. The next main, uh, or the next main step uh, in the notebook is going to be uh, the pre-processing data step. And here in the pre-processing data step, you can see that it depends on the load data step. Uh, and we're going to transform this data set and we're gonna split the data set also into features as well as target uh, variables. And the next uh, step that we want to create this is going to be our machine learning modeling step. You can see it also depends on the pre-processing uh, data step. And then if we continue on uh, down the notebook, we can see we get to the uh, prediction steps. This is going to be your final step in the, in the pipeline. This is going to be your uh, prediction step. So if we see that, we can see that it depends on the modeling step. You can see we're we're specifying that we wanna create a confusion matrix. And there you can see the various parameters of that visualization that we want to create. And for the purposes of this pipeline, we're gonna go ahead and skip the submission step. However, if you're interested in seeing what a submission CSV looks like, we can come back to the, uh, to the file navigator and within the project, we can go to data and you can click on sample submission and you can see what a typical CSV is going to look. Uh, from a submission standpoint for this particular uh, project. So let's go ahead and go back to the notebook, back to the Kale deployment panel. And from here, we could just go ahead and take all the defaults and we are ready to compile and run this particular notebook and turn it into a pipeline. So let's go ahead and click on compile and run. You can see the first thing that happens is that the notebook is validated. And then we are then we are going to take a snapshot and we're gonna take a snapshot in the entire environment, which means the data, the notebook, all the configuration parameters. So if at any point in time, you wanna come back to this exact point in your development uh, flow, you can reconstitute this exact environment with everything that you've got specified here. So that snapshot is already taken for us. 
Then the notebook is compiled, the pipeline is uploaded, and now the pipeline is running. So we can just cl click on the view hyperlink here. And this will take us back into the Kubeflow user interface, specifically into the runs uh, view and the run specifically for this particular uh, notebook. And here in real time, our runtime execution graph is going to po populate. Now you wanna remember that the steps that we're gonna see here are those that we defined in our notebook. So the first uh, thing that's happening here is that we are creating uh, a volume. Now that our volume has been created, we are ready to download our data. Now that the data has been downloaded, we're ready to move on to the next step in the pipeline, which is to load the data. With the load data step complete, we are ready to move on to pre-processing our data. With the pre-processing of our data complete, we are now ready to move on to the machine learning modeling step. And with the modeling step complete, we now move on to the final step in the pipeline, which is going to be our prediction step. And with the prediction step complete, we can now double click on it, go to the visualizations tab, and we can see the confusion matrix that we originally were looking for, that we specified. And that's it. You've created a Kubeflow pipeline for the Kaggle Digit Recognizer competition using the Kale Jupyter Lab extension. So quickly, what were the advantages of using the Kale Jupyter Lab extension over programming directly against the KFP SDK? Well, we avoided a lot of repetitive installation of Python packages. Uh, we were able to quickly uh, program the things that we did need by using cell annotations. So Kale, as well as Qflow, could immediately understand what was happening inside of the cell and how to turn that into the code that we needed to when we actually ran uh, the pipeline. Also, the visualization was a lot more stra straightforward. And if you didn't notice, the notebook was actually a lot smaller because it didn't have all that extraneous code. So Kale is a way to automate, but also much more efficiently create uh, Qflow pipelines.